All right, so let's talk about Apple. Yesterday was uh, WWDC 2019. This is where Apple comes together and uh, announces all their software updates and everything that they're doing. And uh, I guess uh, word came out. It was funny. Word came out over the weekend that they were going to kill iTunes. And uh, a bunch of people messaged me and tagged me like, hey, can you believe they're going to kill iTunes? I'm like, wow. I'm like, we'll have to do, we'll have to do a segment on the show. We'll have to do a, a morning show vlog about killing iTunes. Until I realized that we've already did that. We already did that back in 2017. In 2017, you can go back to the morning show with Anthony Vlog. We did a story where uh, the rumors were pretty, pretty heated that Apple was going to get rid of iTunes. So this is something that we knew was coming. Uh, and it completely makes sense. The days of buying music digitally are, are obsolete. You know, you could make the argument to me uh, that you still need to buy physical music analog records cds okay cds eh. records i can still see an argument for i still like that warm rich sound i'm an audiophile i'll never lose that uh it'll always be there there is something incredibly relaxing about putting on an album and just kind of staring at the you know holding the the jacket and staring at it that'll never change for me i don't think uh, but like everything else, there is no black and white here. This is a gray area. I do, I do love a Sunday morning and putting that record on and hearing that warm, rich sound through my speakers and my sound system and all that. And I also like carrying every single piece of music I own in my pocket. I love that too. You know, I do. Uh, but buy, the days of buying music digitally, they don't seem to make sense anymore. And Spotify has really been the... The, the key in, in sort of killing that momentum, you know, they really have. Uh, and Apple Music and Beats originally, now Apple Music, they've tried to follow suit. So we get the word that they're killing iTunes uh, and WWDC yesterday. I'll just do an abbreviated version of everything of what it's going to look like for the music fan moving forward. Um, and uh, I think it's going to look pretty interesting. Um, there's no real need for iTunes anymore. It's an outdated uh app you're going on itunes to buy you know movies and things like that they finally started fixing those things and making apple tv a thing and you know apple music is going to be its own separate thing they were putting out a couple tv shows on apple through apple music it didn't make any sense now there's going to be a little bit more of a streamline effect so uh, the new music app is based off of iTunes. It'll include several of its standard features like smart playlists, personalized playlists, library management, and Apple Music streaming. To sync a device, users will have to plug in their iPhone, open up the Finder, and choose a syncing option there. There'll be no automatic choices that will appear on the screen like before. There's also a new podcast app that will maintain a similar way to search, discover, subscribe, and ability to listen to podcasts just like before. Data can be synced across all your devices, and the biggest change uses machine learning technology to index the words being spoken in a podcast. This means the next time you want to find an episode by theme or topics discussed on it, you can search for podcasts using these words. That's kind of cool. The Morning Show with Anthony podcast is available on uh, Apple Podcast. I was about to say iTunes. Um, and so if you want to, you know, hear... Uh, anytime we talked about iTunes, you can put in iTunes now and it'll bring that up for you. So if you want to hear anytime we've talked about Fleetwood Mac, you can search Morning Show with Anthony Podcast, Fleetwood Mac, and it'll be able to find that for you. So that's pretty amazing. You know, that's pretty cool. If you're a fan of uh, Bud the Hippie, which I know a lot of you guys are, don't, now I got to hear him say that to me the next time he calls, um, you can search Morning Show with Anthony Podcast, Bud the Hippie, and it'll bring up every time he's made the podcast. So that's really cool. Uh, we talked earlier about another feature, which is live lyrics on the screen. So if you're watching through Apple TV or if you're listening to Apple Music on your phone, it'll actually have live lyrics come up for you on the screen as they appear. That's pretty impressive, especially if they get the Pearl Jam lyrics right, because I can't understand one word that Eddie Vedder is saying. Not a one. So if they're able to get those uh, in there correctly, that's a small miracle unto itself. And uh, for the first time in a long time, I don't even know when they killed this last, but they did. But Apple will now support radio stations with the new Apple radio app, which is great because 
Uh, you know, I know a lot of people like tune in, but there have been some shortcomings there. I'm not the biggest fan. Um, Alexa is the newest way to uh, stream. And by the way, EHM is available to stream through your Alexa device. We have instructions on the top right hand corner of WEHM.com on how to do that. And um, it's cool because now that sort of ease will make its way over to uh, Apple via this radio app and uh, eventually through the Siri speakers. Siri, not as big as Alexa is, not as convenient, not in as many homes, uh, but certainly out to do the job that Alexa is doing and then some. It's the purchase power that Apple's going to have to work on next. They're severely lacking there. But as far as sound quality goes, I feel like most people pick Apple over uh, Alexa. They'll go with Siri over Alexa as far as that's concerned. Although they are starting to soup up some of those uh, Amazon speakers. Uh, and, of course, technology is always changing, so we'll keep our eye on that. But essentially, you know, what you liked about iTunes will still be represented in your Apple setup on your iPhone, uh, on your uh, iPad, on your Mac. It'll still all be there, uh, but it'll just be a little bit more streamlined, a little bit cleaner. Uh, the other interesting thing is they've really taken cues from social media on how to curate certain aspects of your phone uh, so that, um, you know, you can get to things a little bit quicker. Like Facebook's been really good at developing their mobile apps, you know, with the swipe across and back and forth. The ease of using those apps Instagram, Facebook in particular, are really cool. And we're starting to see that more uh, with these functions and building the smart playlists. And now with the radio integration, like there'll be a scenario where if you're listening to Fleetwood Mac, if you're listening to Dave Matthews, if you're listening to Radiohead, you know, and then you go into the uh, Apple radio app, there's a, you know, the machine learning will offer you a suggestion like EHM in the future. You know, so you have EHM and access to it, but think about the poor person in Texas or Kentucky or Oregon that is sitting there suffering through classic rock radio, just dying to just dying to find a bastion of different music. Um, they might be able to do that now. So EHM even has an opportunity here uh, to grow and find new new uh, ways of finding new people all over the place. We really are moving towards this sort of, uh, you know, global society. You know, EHM is a Long Island station. It always will be. Uh, but I've seen this in particular since I've been here too, where first it was streaming through, you know, a laptop and we found more listeners that way. That ability to then get into cars and stream through people's iPhones. That, you know, was another form of expansion. Being on Alexa and having everybody's, you know, people get the emails all the time. Told my cousin and blah, blah, blah. Now he streams you through Alexa. All that kind of like there's just going to be more ways of growth where, uh, you know, little stations like EHM can have bigger impacts, you know, regionally, you know territorially, whatever you want to call it, um, in ways we never have before. So I know a lot of our Connecticut people are bummed because of the whole thing going on with that other station up there in Connecticut, uh, which I intentionally have not been talking about. Um, but um, in two, three years, is that even going to be an issue anymore? I keep saying this, and I will forever say it, and this is another step in that direction, People will not tune into EHM through 92.9 or 96.9 for much longer. They just won't. It'll all be through an app, whether it's on your iOS or your Google product or Alexa or the chip we install in your brain one day. Who knows? Uh, but those days of literally tuning a dial via analog or digitally to a frequency are limited. And Apple took another step in that direction.